Hello and welcome to Worship with Middle Creek Presbyterian Church. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God calls us from the north, from the south, from the east, and from the west to worship him. Let us worship God together. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 63 verses 1 through 4 and I've modified it so that it includes all of us. O God, you are our God. We seek you. Our souls thirst for you. Our flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So we have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, our lips will praise you. So we will bless you as long as we live. We will lift up our hands and call on your name. Our hymn today is an old favorite, God Will Take Care of You. Be not dismayed, whatever betide, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. Through days of toil when heart doth fail, God will take care of you. When dangers fierce your path assail, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. All you may need, he will provide. God will take care of you. Nothing you ask will be denied. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. No matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. Lean weary one upon his breast, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. God does take care of us. Even as we sin, God loves us and forgives us. And so we can confess our sins to God, knowing that we've been forgiven. Let's confess our sins now, using Psalm 51, verses 1 through 13. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence, and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being, therefore teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sin, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. 
Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing heart. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Amen. We know that Jesus does forgive us. He might be in a position to condemn us, but he loves us and he prays for us. Tell those in the room with you that Jesus forgives you. And t tell yourself if you need to hear it, Jesus forgives me. Our scripture lesson for today, we actually have two. The first is Isaiah 41 verses 8 through 10. But you, Israel, my servant Jacob, whom I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham, my friend, whom you whom I took from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest corner, saying to you, You are my servant. I have chosen you and not cast you off. Now listen to these words. They are key. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. And then from 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 and 7, we read, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Our favorite hymn for today is the one that we sang, God Will Take Care of You. The words to this hymn were written by Sevilla Martin, who, if you recall, just a couple of weeks ago, we learned also wrote, His Eye is on the Sparrow. Now I'm going to take the information for this hymn directly from the book, Then Sings My Soul, by Robert J. Morgan. Morgan writes this about the writing of the hymn. On a Sunday in 1904, Sevilla Martin was in Leicestershire, New York, where her husband Walter was compiling a collection of hymns for the Practical Bible Training School. They were planning to travel to another town that day, for Martin had a preaching assignment. Sevilla woke up sick, and Martin was about to cancel his plans when their young child piped up and said, Oh, Daddy, you don't have to stay home because of Mother. God will take care of us. Martin proceeded to the train station and fulfilled his appointment. When he returned, Sevilla handed him the words of God will take care of you, which she had written in his absence. Going to his little organ, Martin composed the music, and it was first published in that songbook that he was compiling for the school. <laughs> that phrase, out of the mouths of babes, comes to mind. The Martin's child demonstrated great faith. He simply trusted God to do what God promised to do, to take care of his mother. Sevilla recuperated from her illness and was inspired by her child's faith. Robert Morgan also writes about how this hymn was an encouragement to someone going through a difficult time. He writes, J. C. Penny who descended from a long line of Baptist preachers, was well on his way to establishing a successful career when the 1929 Great Depression threw him into crisis. His business deals turned sour, and Penny became overwhelmed with anxiety and insomnia. He developed a painful case of shingles and was hospitalized, but tranquilizers and drugs only made things worse. His mental state deteriorated until he later said, I was broken nervously and physically, filled with despair, unable to see even a ray of hope. I had nothing to live for. I felt I hadn't a friend in the world, that even my family had turned against me. But one morning he heard singing coming from the little hospital chapel. The words of the song said, be not dismayed whate'er betide, God will take care of you. Entering the chapel, he listened to the song, to the scripture reading, and to the prayer. Penny said, Suddenly something happened. I can't explain it. I can only call it a miracle. 
I felt as if I had been instantly lifted out of the darkness of a dungeon into warm, brilliant sunlight. All worry left him, as he realized more fully than he had ever imagined just how much the Lord Jesus Christ cared for him. From that day, J.C. Penney was never plagued with worry, and he later recalled those moments in the chapel as the most dramatic and glorious twenty minutes of my life. Later, he became one of America's greatest retail merchants. Did you figure that out? That that's the J.C. Penney that we were talking about. This song reminds us over and over again. Did you notice how many times I said, God will take care of you in that song? It reminds us over and over that God will take care of us. And we need to remind ourselves about that over and over again. No matter what the struggle, no matter what the trial, God is always there to provide whatever we need. God has promised to be with us, and God keeps his promises. We do not need to worry. We need only trust in God's steadfast love and constant care to see us through. No matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. Lean weary one upon his breast, God will take care of you. Amen and amen. I feel as though our affirmation of faith that we've been saying the last several weeks is very appropriate when we sing songs like God will take care of you. We are currently reciting from question number one of the Heidelberg Catechism, and that question is, what is your only comfort in life and in death? And the answer is this, that I am not my own, but belong body and soul in life and in death to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. He has fully paid for all my sins with his precious blood and has set me free from the tyranny of the devil. He also watches over me in such a way that not a hair can fall from my head without the will of my Father in heaven. In fact, all things must work together for my salvation. Because I belong to him, Christ by his Holy Spirit assures me of eternal life and makes me wholeheartedly willing and ready from now on to live for him. We know that many people are in the midst of crisis right now, and we can lift them up to God, knowing that he cares for them. Let us pray together. Dear God, we thank you that you are always with us and that you do take care of us. As we lift up the names of these people, we ask that you be with them and that they can feel your presence in their lives. We pray for those who are sick and for those receiving treatment and therapy. We pray for those awaiting tests and surgery. We pray for those in the final days of their life. Lord, we pray for those struggling with mental illness and addiction. And we pray for those for whom life has become so overwhelming that they consider suicide. Lord, we pray for caregivers, and we pray for those who mourn. We pray for the poor and the oppressed. We pray for those who find themselves living in violence, and especially when the violence is in their own home. Lord, we pray for those who are worried about where their next meal might come from or whether they can find and keep their jobs and their homes. We pray for those dealing with human-made and natural disasters, and we especially pray for those who put their lives on the line to help those of us who are in need. Lord, we pray for our leaders here and around the world, and we pray for your church that it might be a place of hope, 
that we might be a people who remind others that God, you God, take care of us all. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, we want to encourage you all to come to our booth at the fair. We will be in Moss Hall uh, during the Winnebago County Fair this year. Uh, we have a table and we oftentimes have free gifts for anybody who wants to take one. So feel free to come and visit the folks who are at the fair. Let them know that you have heard uh, and seen us on YouTube and that um, that you are part of our community even though you have not been present with us. We are continuing to worship uh, in person at 9 a.m. and at 10.30 a.m. And so we encourage you to come and join us whenever you feel that you are able. We also encourage you to give to the ministries of this church. Uh, you can write a check to Middle Creek Presbyterian Church and mail it to us. Uh, just look on our YouTube, I mean, excuse me, our Facebook page or on the web to find our address. Also, we are uh, supporting Church World Service and for their kits, their hygiene kits and school kits. And so if you wish to write a separate check for that, write it out to Middle Creek PW and insert it with the check uh, for your offerings. But if you wish to give to other causes, we support, for example, uh, People Helping People, which is the Food Pantry in Byron. Um, we encourage you to support any of those mission projects that are in your neighborhood. Let us pray a prayer of dedication for our offerings. Dear Lord, you are so generous and gracious to us. And as we offer gifts to you, we ask that they be used for your service to help those who are in need. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. And now the grace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, the Holy Spirit keep you, that you may live in faith, abound in hope, and grow in love both now and forever. Amen. God bless you, and we'll see you again next week.